In the heart of Western Nigeria lies a society that has been beacon of educational enlightenment for over a century. This is the story of young Anzardin that has grown to be Anzardin Society of Nigeria. Our journey begins in the early 20th century when 42 young men with vision and understanding of the transformative power of education came together to establish this organization. The parents of our fathers who had children growing up at the close of the century, if they must send their children or have to send their children to school, to Western education, they have to send their children to Christian schools. In the process, unfortunately, a good number of them were converted to Christianity. At the Muslim child who are being denied the opportunity of having education simply because of their religion, unless they are prepared to change their name and change their religion. And that was the state of affairs. That was the situation for a very long time until these young men who were in the Lagos Central Mosque then were yearning for a change they wanted an appropriate response to what they saw as an onslaught. Onslaught not only on their religion, but on their you know, culture and on their people. Because they believe that the failure and lack of proper understanding of Islam is one of the major reasons that made Muslims be looked at as backward Muslims. And that is why they make it a point of our duty for them to create schools. But they started their activities by creating public lectures where they discuss Islam, where they discuss the responsibility of Muslims, where they made Islam known to congregation who come for that lectures. These young men were part of the central mosque and they had serious agitations with respect to Western education in, in Lagos. They felt it was not right. They themselves had gone through that process and they felt that something should be done about it. This their noble thought was not shared by many of their 
compatriots who were also members of the Central Mosque. But once they had enough um, commitment from like minds, there were 42 of them at the end of the day, they decided to withdraw from the Central Mosque and they formed the body they called uh, the Young and Sars. They started with open air uh, lectures at Balogun Square, or what we call Ita Balogun. It was an open land where people like me as young boys used to play football. And they all come up and shoes allow a compound as their meeting place. Allah will compound is rooted at Balogun, Balogun Street West, beside a mox that is called Ratibi Mox at Balogun. Precisely 21st of December 1923, they formed the association called the Young Ansarudin. Now, the Central Mosque saw them as rebels. So a, a lot of intrigues, a lot of, you know, these, these young men, they're troublesome, they are asking questions, they're shaking the table, they are... So, and there were certain social consequences. Nobody gave them a chance. Nobody took them serious. After all, they're just... Um, you know, like the Quran will say, Shirdimatun Qalil, just infinitesimal. Let them go, they will come back. And of course, they proved everybody wrong because about eight years after, they started a school. Uh, it must be said, of course, that um, the British themselves set up a Muslim primary school in Lagos. Uh, during or about the time of the First World War. When I say Muslim school, it was open. It was done largely to help Muslim children to go to school. But that was not enough. And that came as a part remedy. The society was founded, one, in pursuit of Western education. We did not exclude Islamic or Quranic education. It was part of their study. They wanted also to defend Islam against the many lies and many propaganda. They do not believe that there is another or there could be another prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We are all proud to say, we who are living, are proud to say that they established the second Muslim primary school. The first was uh, Ahmadiyya Primary School at Elegbata, which was established in 1921. But Anzardin Society established the second in Nigeria, throughout the country, not only a colony, Northern Protectorate, Southern Protectorate, who are proud to say that the Anzars established Alakoro Primary School in September 1929. The success story of Anzardin Society of Nigeria can be seen in various individuals that have gone through their schools, who have become captains of industries in various fields which they have chosen. We can name individuals, both home and abroad, who have made the society proud and who also dedicated their success stories in life to the establishment of this organization.
Their first school was in the Ansaldi Alakuru Primary School. That's where they started. And it has a lot of history, a, a huge history. There's so many prominent Lagosians went to that primary school. And then I think by 1953, they had uh, established the Ansaldi College Solo. When we entered the school in 1953, we were about 53 of us. At that time, I remember very well that uh, there were only two cars in, in, the, in, the, in Solo. The car of the or Solo of the Solo at that time, and principal's car. So if you are going, even without looking back, if you hear the sound of the car, you know is that it's either the principal or the Osolo of Isolo. And if you miss the school bus, you can never see any lorry going to Isolo. Uh, lorries and vehicles go to Isolo is only on market days, usually on Thursdays, before you have the boarding houses. Students will not uh, risk the idea of uh, missing the school bus because you have to check for motion to Isolo. I was born and bred in Lagos, Lagos Island precisely. Moving from Olowogbowo to Isaleko. Coming back to Olowogbowo, I had my primary education at Ansaluddin Primary School, Alakoro. I went to Ansaluddin Alakoro, Society of Nigeria. If not Ansaluddin, I wouldn't have gone to that school now. Look at the numbers of their contribution in the area of education. Look at the area of health. Look at so many people that have enjoyed free education from there. Look at Muslims. They have gotten a spiritual elevation through and out of them. Another thing we need to understand about these gentlemen is that they are committed. They are focused. And they are honest. And there is love. You know, when there is love, things get done. Almighty Allah's blessings come in. And this is where they are different. During a Muslim festivals, as well as during a uh, it had a. Ah. They go around to appeal to Muslims the skin of the ram or goat or whatever they kill that they should not throw them away, dry them up, and they will collect them and start selling them. And we, all, as we all know, skins are used for leather bags, quite a lot of things. So they started selling them and making money out of that apart from this other small amount money coming in terms of donation. But primarily, they thought out a way in order to combat the financial uh, obstacle which they encountered. I said, what do you do long? I'm sorry, you know that what do you do? 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 In your papa, no young Pataki. To answer, didn't to she. To Jay be a tear back to she will know. One let in the school, what in your boy could see me keep to my dinner ways to a new school and sorry. I want Baba be and where came my day and will be baby, 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 or man go by sickle. Lost him and everything. That's if you die. One quality about Anzaldi is that you don't discriminate. In our schools, we admit both Muslims and Christians, and we give them thorough education. People have occupied position of authority in this country. Most, some of them came out from Anzaldi schools. I don't want to mention names. But if anybody is interested, do some research. You will know that people at the very high level, either politically, at the university, or at, name it, and Saudin have, have paid his dues. Against the backdrop of colonial rule, these young men called young Anzardin put their resources together took this bold step of opening Western educational schools with Islamic teachings, thus promoting value of compassion, tolerance, 
communal collaboration and services in various communities define themselves. As I'm speaking, I know that we have branches in Kutonu, Benin Republic, we have in Ghana, we have in Togo, and we also have abroad, United States of America and United Kingdom. So the message of Ansari, which is the message of, of Islam, peace, emancipation of the individual, spiritual development of the individual has been passed by generations of Ansars to several people. I had gone out of this country with the National Missioner to establish branches in four branches in America. These branches are doing well, but we can do more. You know, we can do more. We have also we, have, we also have two branches in in London, and so if we get all these places, we can do. We can go to Canada. We there are fifty whatever states in America. So what are we talking about? Four branches. We can do much more. And Sawirin holds education at heart. And they've been building schools and making children to come in. But some of this uh, Muslim society they didn't, uh, you know, agree much on that. But now you can see the result. And they've been copying and Sawirin now, but nobody can beat them. And Sawirin has a primary, secondary, tertiary building universities, so we thank God. I am a student of Asaruddin University and Primary School, Suru Newe. In my school, they teach us how to become a total child. We are safe until after marriage. She know your partner. She know your partner. My name is Abdullah Mujami. I want to be a mechanical engineer in the future. That is why I'm in Asaruddin University and Primary School. What I love about my school is that we get to combine Islamic education and Western education. We don't just come here to study, but also have effective learning to become great ambassadors of tomorrow. And what they are doing is still good, is, as I said about education. We should continue with it because we gain a lot on that. Our children gain, especially, you know, Islamic way, Western way. There's no way you ask, you know, about uh, Ansaruddin that you don't get from them. And they are well disciplined. I could see they are well disciplined. It's very, very important to see they are in uniform, to see that they are neat, they color right in the right place, and they don't abuse or talk. Before, it wasn't like that. The reason why I love my school is because the teachers here yeah, give us personalized attention. Our school gives us opportunity to attend debates, seminars, and competitions. This exposure makes us outstanding among our peers. And of course, it is a conducive environment to learn. Here at Ansar Odin, we are taught to be an all-round student, both in our academics and in our morals. So by the time we are graduating from Ansar Odin Grammar School, we are going to become a, a good ambassador to the public and to the society at large. What I love about Ansar Odin College is all the most is the high academic morals and religious belief. Our teachers don't only take us as a student, but rather they take us as their own child and they give us the best support and Care we ever need. One thing I love most about Ansaruddin is the ability of students to express themselves, and this I'll never forget. We are well equipped to face the challenges ahead of us and to make Ansaruddin proud. In 1962, we founded uh, Ansaruddin All Students Association, and since that time, it has been going on very well. I was the president of the All Students Association from 1982 when it becomes uh, co-educational. First and foremost, the fact that it stopped the hemorrhage of Muslim youths going to the Christian faith, which is very, very vital and jamming, it has also imparted spiritual and Islamic knowledge on the people and emancipated us and made us understand our, even our Islamic religion better. Aside that, there's also the issue of the educational structure of the society, 
which started from primary school way back in Alakuru. Today, Alhamdulillah, we have had several secondary schools. We have had a college of education. And right now we have a university. Very grateful that we'll be able to establish a university after the forefathers. We'll be able to establish a college of education after the forefathers. In Lagos Manchester today, we are trying to immortalize the, four, the founding fathers by building a hall, a multipurpose hall, and name it after them, the founding fathers hall. Despite the challenges of the modern world that we live today, the touch bearer of this society and Zawadin Society of Nigeria hold firmly to the core value of this organization. And they are also passing it down to the generation coming behind. Founding fathers and founding women, their wives were there to support and they formed a salatu. When the men started, they called their women to follow them. So they said, okay, we started with the founding fathers. Let's go with our family. So you see them going with their wives, their children. Then you see the teenage ladies. Those are the, those were the mama, Agbabi Akas. And uh, we had another one, Madabiri, and the host of them, many of them, like Mama Agbabi Amila, and many of them. We see ourselves as the engine room for our fathers. We support them in all ways because that's where they get their energy from by doing their work. And women provide them, you know, funds, things like that for them to use. To women, they put their trust in God and whatever they say about you know, concerning Islamic things, they put in their effort into it, especially financially. It is very, very important to know that Antarodin youths are at the forefront of um, the Antarodi mission presently. And the expansion plans of the society is strictly driven by the youths. We the youths, because of this mindset that we have, we have this global mindset, and we are at the forefront of emerging technologies. We have been able to leverage on this to connect with Antarodi branches all over the world. So we are creating this uniformity all over the world. So these are some of the things that um, we and Saturday youths are at the forefront of presently. So what they did was that, particularly Lagos branch, the stage, um, like stage plays, like stage plays that, you know, like, you know, what these theater people used to do then before this film. So there will be a day, like these programs we do and say we are doing women's day. So they were, they were, their own was stage plays. They were stage plays, they, were, they had the way they dressed, then they entertain people. That's the young and Saturday ladies. They would sing, they would say Arabic, uh, Islamic things, knowledge and everything. Then people would come and they would be attracted. And they would ask them, bring your daughters to. You can see the beauty of Islam. You can bring your daughters. If you see this, our mom, homies, they speak like more of English girls, ladies. That's how they spoke. And they dress the same way. Just In fact, their own dressing was so modest, you wonder, are these Muslims? And they are Muslims. They pray well, they interact well, and they carry themselves very well. Else work, we normally have it every year in our own branch, but this year we hosted the state council, and which was a huge success. So we take a lot of this. The youth movement of Azaldin have been very, very supportive. And we've been seeing their impact. I mean, let's give that to our youths. All over, not only in Lagos, all over. They've been doing their best. Yes, they need our support, the, 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 the elderly. We, they need our support. And the current administration of the society at the national level, headed by our amiable president, I read Dr. Abdurafi Ademola Sonny. You know, the administration is taking along the youth in all what we are doing. and we can see that they have a future. And Saudi youths presently have been taking up much more responsibility than, as, than it was in the past. 
For example, um, Ansarodin youths are presently even building a medical center, which will be the primary medical center of Ansarodin in Lagos. This is just to showcase that um, we the youths play a very, very important role. Um, Ansarodin youths are also the brainchild of Ansarodin's new media policy, whereby we are already marking our presence across the internet, across um, various social media channels. And um, the youths have been at the forefront of this. Also, our youths are, are also participate and head various important committees within the society. The Council of the Society has clearly spread this out. Why we have the male executive, so also we have the female executive. From national down to the divisions. We have four tiers of government, the national, the state, the branch, and the division. So today, there is no division that does not have a branch chair person. So also, we have the male secretary, branch chairman, and secretary. And the thing runs up like that. Like the Lagos branch, every year once we get in, we start, we, we, we run down our programs. We have a chat and say, okay, what programs do you have? We may have about five or four lined up. Then we give it dates and time. Then we had a, a, a common one. That's that in, at, at the state council level. That's the women, Women's Day. Every branch had a day for the Women's Day. So we submit it at the state council. We approve it for them. And when it's time, they just remind us by a letter and say, okay, this month is our Women's Day. So in our branch, I think we started with, uh, we had a, uh, we are fond of, uh, we are the Omi Coast, so we do our things in the Omi Coast. And we still make our money. At the time we say, okay, we want to do sales of the, sales of the year. We, we know what we sell. We invite people, they come. Because a woman knows how to approach people how to talk to people, how to make them understand that this thing is for this, it's real. So they, they're not deceiving them. Then the men will think, that, oh yeah, this, this woman is talking sense. And after, after all, God is for everybody. What he's doing will be true. And then if, even if they, do, if they want to put five, they put 10. I believe in Islam because it teaches us to be straightforward. It teaches us to help others. A man she ijra, as he go ijra in, I ma go around the environs. Our environment here, we march, we do march pass, we sing. I ma ba bandiri to ma telewa. I ma loka kriyo ma mokwe ijra wanta. Then I omo wa wa she party for one in our pavilion. I ma ba ban sing cast. I ma share ma ne phone. Then I to ma ne children invest. Then this time but I ban share invest in. So she don't have a say, no, I enjoy it. We have a bouncing castle, and we have a lot of games. We have a lot of games. Then, we have a lot of games. We have a widows. We have a help. We have a less privilege. We have a lot of games. We have a lot of games. We have a lot of games. Not just one person. We have a lot of support. We have a lot of games. We did a lot. We will buy things to all the hospitals. We will buy things to the numerous babies. We will look for people who, who don't have anything to eat. We are doing beautifully well. We have so many schools now. We have Gaza school. We have mixed school. We have boys school. We have everything, and they are doing very well. We hold programs. Uh, we synergize with other youth groups in the Southwest and all over the country whereby we come together, we hold programs, we carry out outreach programs, we visit, um, we visit various homes, old people's homes, prisons, and all these things. And we, the youths, have been at the forefront of this. Sabun mari amali awariyina 
Mana al-sari ilallahi qala la'awwariyuna nanu al-saru la'i Fa'ambati ta'ifatun min bani sirai'la Wa kafarat ta'ifatun fa'ayyadina alladina amanu ala aduwihim Today, the society has grown to be one of the most famous, largest, and most respected organizations in Nigeria. 21st December 2023, the society will be celebrating its 100th year anniversary. The society has come a long way from 1923 uh, when it was established. And I, I, I must congratulate all the men and women that have contributed to sustaining the society uh, with the right leadership and the right uh, people, and a new generation of thinking, uh, innovation. We will do another 100 years and other multiples. So as I've been celebrating 100 years, I think it's boiled down to a law that says, Manamila Solia Fali Nafsihi. Whoever does any good will be rewarded with good. This has to do with their intention. And that goes to everybody. Whatever you are doing in this world, you must watch your intention. That is what we found in Addis number one of selected tradition of Anawawi, when the prophet said, Inamal Amalu bin Niyat, wa inamali kuli muri manawa. Every action shall be judged according to the tension. And you will be rewarded according. This could be a reward. This is a reward for Almighty Allah. They must have been doing so many good things for Almighty Allah to leave them to continue to elongate the lifespan of the society. Overall, I will say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> So my advice to the present generation now, or the generation coming to the society, number one, is to follow the footsteps of those our, found, our grandfathers that found the society. That is number one. Then number two, they should have good intention. Number three, they should depend on Allah alone and be focused. The society should not rest on their words. We are, the society is making efforts to take the lead and maintain the lead and stay there. The society should continue to do that and taking the lead because every other society that I've said before, they are always looking towards our Saudi society of Nigeria. My message is very straightforward. We must love each other. We must believe in each other. We must work together. Because without togetherness, without love, as I've said before, you cannot achieve much. Almighty Allah, you know, blesses places where there is love and where there is understanding. This society wa 400 years. Quanti a mark me, quanti a mark shake, quanti a man in litigation. Could a man love it? Benny, who is the one? The quarter and Babato fear best let and why I don't feel silly any. If you alone, at the party, I'll be there. When you call, you come alone. Advice to me, fun one, say you didn't. Now, what that in one hundred years? Ni we pick up a baba wa. Come a fear ye ba one more you to wa. Come a phone proper training and education. We have talents, but you have to sort for them. You have to help them, encouraging them in both ways, education and religion. Without religion, there is no education. Without education, there is no religion. They go party passy. We are from different type of homes. But commitment, patience, perseverance, and duty of purpose can bring us together and lead us to the pinnacle or the summit of the society. So I'm encouraging every one of us to let us join hands together and be the society for the coming generation. We have not reached 
the level where those young Ansaruddin and um, Ansaruddin society wants us to, to be. Apart, uh, as a, if you read the, our constitution, we have five items. The first is education. The second one, defending Islam. Again, hospitals. Each society, each, each branch, and at the state level, must strive and put more effort to create or to establish hospitals. When they founded the society, they were in their twenties. My father was only twenty-six. The Bajabia Millers, the Daudus, the Coles, and all those who founded the society in 1923, were under 30. So it's a challenge to you young men and women. This is the time for you young men and women to move in and take over. We are prepared to step down. It's just to be a good Ansar. Ansar, as we all know, means helper. And Ansar Odin means helper of the religion. Some of us have done our best, we are still trying our best. Some have done their best and they've gone, they've left it to us. We are doing our best now. I will now charge other members to be up and doing, to hold that flag of Ansaruddin lofty so that it will be stainless. The Ansaruddin Society is an Islamic organization. It is not a cultural group. It is not a tribal union. It is not um, a social setting. It is not a club. It is not a cult. It is an Islamic organization. Islam gave it its preeminence. And it is only by strict adherence to the tenets of Islam, pure Islam, the Islam of the Prophet, the Islam of Kitab wa Sunnah, that can ensure its relevance and its success in the years ahead. As we conclude our journey through the history of the society, we see a future where education becomes the catalyst for moral ideals, values, and Islamic tenets in our society as we move on. We are reminded that the legacy of the founding father of Anzardin Society of Nigeria is not just the chronicle of the past, but the roadmap for the future yet unborn. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.